Hey friends, it's Debbie here. Happy 2024, happy new year. I know it's already the second week of the new year. How long do we all agree to say happy new year for anyway? I think this is the first year I'm not doing the sort of classic new year's resolution kind of deal. I feel like the way that it's set up, it's like you set these big goals for the whole year and at the end of the year, then you kind of feel bad because you didn't accomplish like all of them or I don't know, it's never really worked for me. So I wanted to try something new this year. I saw an artist on Instagram share a kind of more or less list. I'll add her Instagram somewhere around here. And they were inspired by Julia Rothman, who is the original creator of this format, of making a list of intentions more around the concept of some things you want more of and some things you want less of in the upcoming year. I feel like in 2023, I learned a lot about myself. And I think this format of of being able to consider what kind of things I would want more of in my life and what things maybe I'd want less of feels more like relaxed and yeah, it just feels more like an evolution rather than like a, as if I'm like expecting like a sudden change by the end of the year. I also made a printable that's free for y'all to use. I'm gonna leave the link down below so you can download it. We're gonna talk about my more and less list of 2024 and reflect a bit on my 2023. I'm gonna be writing these down and talking about them with you. So I'm actually gonna pin my mic to myself. Hopefully I don't mess this up. Do you hear me okay? Testing, testing. So my first more of is definitely art making. I feel like in 2023, I haven't really shared much of this journey so far on YouTube, but I was basically more for like half the year recovering from knee surgery. So it wasn't really my priority to be making things because I was in a lot of pain and really focused on just recovery. So I really want to focus on all sorts of art making. I started um, later in 2023 exploring with like gouache paints. I also started sketching a bit more and I feel like I'm slowly getting back into the groove of more consistent art making practice and that's something I want to continue. Part of this includes even starting the artist way journey. I've heard so many good things about this course and I'm on the second week already and I've learned so much. I want to make more personal work as well, not just work for the social media sphere, develop my art style, just kind of start the building blocks of, of all of this. I also want to travel more. Because of my injury, I wasn't able really to do much for almost a year and a half. And then in the later part of last year, me and my partner went to Copenhagen. It was just like a short four day trip, but it opened my eyes to like, I can't believe I've just been stuck at home. <laughs> Not only these past few years that I've been recovering from my, like my knee injury in general, but also the pandemic. So yeah, so in 2024, I want more traveling and we've already planned a trip to Japan, which I'm so excited about. So that's, there's more to come there. I also want more like slow mornings. I've learned in the past year that starting off my day, like in a very relaxed way, I didn't know that would rhyme. It really defines the rest of my day. I'm, I feel more productive later on when I'm able to not just like get out of bed, jump into emails, jump into a whole bunch of things that I need to do. I feel like when I'm able to pause in the morning and also the artist way teaching me to like dedicate some time to the morning pages and being able to just, I don't know, drink my coffee, drift a little, think a little, whatever. That whole process is really nice for me to start my day and I wanna, I wanna have more of that, yeah. I really want to continue that. This connects to something I want less of, which are expectations. I don't want any expectation for myself, for other people in general. Being able to have my slow mornings makes me feel like, yeah, I don't have to just jump into things. But when I have a lot of expectations of myself and I'm feeling anxious about all of the things I need to do and I have this like to-do list that I've just perfectly made and my Google calendar and everything, it's just, I always end up letting myself down because I'm not a robot. I am a human person that can only do so many things in a day or a week or a month or whatever. Even making this list, it's like I'm setting myself with like no expectations whatsoever of like no resolutions. It's just some things I want more or less of in my life. Another thing I want less of is doom scrolling, endless scrolling, 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 no more doom scrolling. What are we avoiding? Everything. <laughs> life. Responsibilities. We're procrastinating. I'm tired of the endless scrolling. I'm tired of having so many TikTok sounds in my head that I can't even hear myself think. The doom scrolling ends up 
being a symptom of something that I'm feeling or avoiding and I can tell when I've been more anxious that week when that little weekly screen time percentage goes up and I'm like oof what am I avoiding? Less doom scrolling so that I can have more time in my day and not have all these TikTok sounds burning my brain. And we're going from less doom scrolling to more reading because reading is what? Fundamental. <laughs> we're not talking about that kind of reading, more like reading books. Less doom scrolling, more reading. When I was younger, I think this happens to so many of us. When I was younger, I used to read so much and I don't know what's happened. Or maybe I do know, I, I feel like I really programmed myself of like that my free time is watching TV or scrolling on my phone but like not just not watching tv to watch new stories or anything i'll just watch gilmore girls for like the thousandth time that year i remember i used to read so much and as an adult i've really lost that practice or that hobby of mine that's why i want to incorporate reading more into my life because i really want to dive into stories again one thing i need to have less of is buying things impulsively I order a lot of takeout because when i'm feeling really overwhelmed the idea of cooking a whole new meal feels like so much for me i'm not really into cooking that much i can do it i know my way around a kitchen so to speak but i don't know sometimes the idea of doing something completely from scratch feels like too much. Maybe thinking about meal prepping, having something already made, or setting a notification for me to go cook something like an hour before like the time I usually have lunch or or just dedicating more time to like nurturing myself in a way. And I also wanna stop ordering takeout too because I always get a bunch of acid reflux and like burps and like I just don't feel good after it. So I know I need to listen to my body there more where it's just like, Debbie, come on, your body doesn't like this. You order something, you immediately feel bad after. So why are we doing it? Speaking of nurturing myself, I also wanna further like take care of and nurture the relationships I have in my life, not only with my partner, but with my friends as well. I feel like when you go through a really intense injury or like recovery process, the relationships you have with the people in your life do change because you're in a very vulnerable state. And I feel like the people that I have in my life right now are just like the best. <laughs> I feel like in the past year, I really tried to set intentional time with a lot of the people that I have in my life now. I feel a lot closer to so many people in my life right now that I didn't maybe have even a year ago. And it just feels really nice. <laughs> I wanna continue spending quality time with the people that I love. That's connected to another thing I want more of, which is dinner parties. I love hosting at my house. We host a Friendsgiving every year, and this year we combined Friendsgiving with like White Elephant, and we also watched a movie after, and I feel like that day was so like nice and cozy and lovely, and I don't know, I had a really great time. I wanna continue hosting dinner parties or movie nights or game nights. Can we bring back board games? or card games, I love Uno. <laughs> so like, I wanna just be able to like host more people in my house. Something I want less of is self-doubt. We are not doing that anymore. No more self-doubt. I wanna believe in myself. <laughs> Believing that I can do hard things rather than always feeling like I can't. Again, like not to always bring it back to my injury. It's just, it was a really big thing that happened for me last year, but recovering from this surgery was so hard. And there were so many moments that I was like, I can't do this. So much like beating myself up over these kinds of things. And yeah, like less of that, no more. No more of that actually, no more self-doubt. We can do hard things. <laughs> Usually my self-doubt is connected to me like rotting in bed. I don't want to use rotting because it sounds horrible, but it kind of is. I'm just kind of like, I lay in bed all day or I lay on the couch all day watching Community for the thousandth time. And I, I would like less of that. I would like less being in this vegetative, zoned out, disassociative state where I'm just staring at the TV, blobbing. I would like less of that. A lot of the things that I want less of are like symptoms when I'm feeling overwhelmed or stressed. And this is definitely one of them. I'm really good at 
just being on the couch all day and doing nothing. I'm like, it's one of the things I'm best at. And I would really like less of that because I want more movement in my body. I want more dancing. I want more walking. I want more working out. And I used to have like a really toxic way of thinking about moving my body or exercise in general. But again, like my recovery forces me to have to use my leg because I have to move my knee to be able to fully like successfully recover from the surgery you have to develop a lot of muscle strength because you basically lose all of your muscle when you get knee surgery at first my relationship to the gym was really interconnected with recovering from my knee but then it started developing into a very healthy relationship for myself where i feel so much better after i go i feel so much better after i've moved a little and connecting how i feel after moving my body rather than how I felt in the past about this sort of toxic mindset about it. Where I would either like completely avoid the gym because I was like scared or what would they think of me or just like not wanting to be perceived at all. Or then I would go and walk on the treadmill or do the elliptical or whatever because the rest of the machines intimidated me, not gonna lie. And then expecting that this one time that I went, I don't know, I lost a bunch of weight. And it's like, what are we doing here? That is not the point. <laughs> at all. Now, being able to feel more connected with my body through movement too is something I want to have way more of in my life in 2024. I definitely want to keep that with me. Something else I need less of in my life is googling my symptoms. I don't know about all of you but I will feel a headache and think it's cancer and I really need to stop that. It mainly got really intense this year with my knee with my knee recovery because anytime I would feel any little thing, I was already Googling like fail percentage of failure in ACL surgeries <laughs> or like just feeling like I did it wrong, I recovered wrong or I somehow rebroke it or I don't know, just like I've been so cautious when I walk because I'm like, what if I break it again? Um, any little thing that I feel, I'm, I'm like hyper aware and hyper focused on the feelings of my body that I will, I've, I've spent a lot of time Googling my symptoms and I really, I would like, I would really like less of that in 2024. Something else that I want less of is this all or nothing mentality. I set myself up for failure often because like, I do a whole lot or I'm like paralyzed by fear or self doubt or anxiety or anything like there's no in between and i would like less of that kind of feeling i would like to have less of this mentality of feeling like i have to do everything all at once because that does tend to then lead me to doing nothing at all and then it's like a cycle then i just feel bad i hate myself because i couldn't i can't believe i didn't do the thing i wanted to do it just it just happens over and over again we want less of that in 2023 i really learned that little things that you do every day really amount to big things nothing has to be done all at once you can just go little by little and go at your own pace and take things day by day and not expect for change to happen overnight or not expect for your goals to be achieved all in one day except <laughs> accepting that we're human we need some time to figure things out we'll succeed at some things we'll make mistakes along the way but the most important thing is just to find balance and yeah like to know that you don't have to do everything all at once. You can just take things day by day and it'll be okay. Another rhyme that I didn't expect. And that's kind of connected to my last thing I want less of, which is feeling like it's too late. Too late for what? Who says it's too late, right? I often feel because I'm 32, I'm turning 33 in a few weeks, that it's too late for me to try to have an art career. I see all of these younger artists killing it and I love them and I'm fans of them, but it also makes me feel insecure that like maybe maybe my time maybe my time is gone. Maybe it's not this isn't for me, that I should just accept it and that that's fine. It's just that I've dreamed of being an artist and living off of my art for so long, but because of life circumstances or even emotional states that I've been in, 
I just didn't put in the time and effort in that moment to share my art or talk about the things that I'm doing. But yeah, that feeling of what if it's too late for me? Like that's just, that's nothing, you know? Who, who sets these milestones? Who says it's too late for anything? That thought is something I definitely need and want less of going into 2024 and even like beyond. It's never too late to follow your dreams, pursue any of your passions, to do whatever you want. It doesn't even have to be a career-based goal. It's never too late to learn something new. It's never too late to pick up a new hobby. These arbitrary ages, like, oh, in your 20s, you have to do this. In your 30s, you have to do this. By your 40s, you have to have this. Who, sa who, who says that? Who, who's they? We should be able to decide those things for ourselves. And that's something that's connected to my last thing on my more side of my list, which is trying new things. I want to be braver and not hold myself back from, from trying things that maybe I won't be so good at in the beginning, trusting the process. It's okay to be bad at things. Sometimes it's okay to feel a little bit uncomfortable. I want to start leaving my little comfort bubble little by little at a pace that feels good for me in 2024. That's all for my more and less lists for 2024. I hope you enjoyed my rambles, my talking, my tiki tiki tiki. Sometimes I feel like I talk a lot. I tried to keep it short and concise. So I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you had a lovely New Year's. And if you're comfortable sharing, let me know what are your more or less of for 2024. I also know there was like a trend going around of ins and outs. I think that's pretty cool. Or if you're setting any goals or intentions for 2024. Let me know in a comment below and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. 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 It was nice to see you. Yeah, it was nice to see you. Bye. Okay, bye. <laughs>